Hawks. Irvin Johnson, who became known as Magic after he passed by. And Michael Jordan has also been here. These and dozens of others who make up the ranks of collegiate and professional basketball's best. Today we add more names like Billy Owens from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, at 6'9", 215 pounds. He has helped his high school team to four straight Pennsylvania high school championships. Billy Owens enrolling at Syracuse this fall. Alonzo Mourning from Chesapeake, Virginia, and his name called by some one of the best teenage players ever at 6'10", 230, and headed for the Georgetown Hoyas. This event started in 1978. And already, many of basketball's best have been part of this event. The McDonald's All-American High School Basketball Game. Well, this is the infamous pit in Albuquerque, New Mexico where ranked and favored college basketball teams visiting here seldom win. It is the home of the University of New Mexico Lobos and the setting for the 1988 McDonald's All-America High School basketball game. 24 of the top players in the country will be seen today. And believe it or not, 12 of these 24 players stand 6'9 or better. They're getting bigger, stronger, and faster. And let's turn to Dick Vitale and talk about this extraordinary gathering of high school age big people. Keith, I really believe it's the greatest assembled talent that I've seen in my 25 years of following scholastic basketball. When we talk about big people, we start with Alonzo Mourning, the shot blocking whiz, the Hoya, the guy that'll have him rocking and rolling in the Big East. He's a tremendous talent with great rejection ability. How much rejection ability? 27 block shots in one game. And then there's another versatile big guy by the name of Billy Owens from out of Carlisle, PA. To me, Billy Owens is Barishnikov in shorts. For the non-ballet aficionados, he really is the making of another Danny Manning. And that's the kind of talent we have, Keith. Where we had Picasso in tennis shoes last year, now you've got Barishnikov in shorts, huh? All right, let's talk about the big men. That's fine. They make all the noise. They drive the Cadillacs like the home run players, huh? What about the people that get them the ball? There are some extraordinary guards hanging around the edge this year, I think. Well, they're great guards. It starts right in the state of Mississippi with a little guy by the name of Chris Jackson. He's got ultra quickness. I call him a mini version of little Isaiah Thomas, who I loved when he played at Indiana. Mr. Jackson's got great range as a shooter. Take a look at his dribbling skills, his ability to pull up and stick the J. They're going to love him wherever he goes, and it's LSU and Georgetown in a war. There he is with the downtown jump shot. He's just a tremendous offensive talent. He's got superb quickness. He can skywalk with the best. A great guard. But not only do we have Mr. Jackson, we have another guy by the name of Lateral Green. You ready for these stats, Mr. Jackson? How do you like these? 39.7 a game, 11.4 rebounds a game, nine assists a game, four steals a game. I want to know something. Did anybody else play in the game? I mean, I can't believe it. I find it kind of amusing, Dick, that all of a sudden the state of Mississippi is producing two of the top point guards in the country. I sort of get the feeling that the promoters and purveyors of high school basketball talent suddenly just discovered the state of Mississippi. I expect they've been playing pretty good basketball down there for quite some time. It's just somebody suddenly discovered that there is some talent there, and they will show up. And we'll be back with more in just a moment. A game that involves some degree of temper without being excited at a mono back and retire from the television world and go to coaching. Look at these two talents. On my left, Alonzo Mourning going out to Georgetown. On my right, Lafonso Ellis going out to Notre Dame. Let me start with Alonzo first of all. Alonzo, there's been so much written about you and said about you, and I know everybody's labeled you number one. What does this do for you in terms of pressure and expectations? Well, I really don't think it's really that much pressure now that you cause pressure to be on yourself. I really um, think that all you have to do is really go out. Every big game like this, you go out and relax and just play your game and really don't worry about the expectations of the audience. 
just really go out there and play your game and play as hard as you usually play. You know, Alonzo, they tell you you're a great shot blocker. In high school, you dominate a lot of people, but now you get a chance to Stanley Roberts, LaFonso here on my right, to play against other big people. This got to excite you. Yes, it is kind of exciting playing against such exceptional talent. Um, really, mainly, when you go out here and play against this talent, I mean, you really um, improve them every time you play against the bigger guys because it's really getting you ready for the next step, and that's your collegiate career. And um, it's, it's, it's going to be fun today. I'm really looking forward to it. You're going to love your dad at Georgetown. Let me go here to the guy that you'll be competing with. LaFonso, I want to know something. All the notoriety, all the fame, you guys are signing autographs. I watch you all over. What do you do to relax and just be a 17-year-old kid when you get away from basketball? You have to really stay down to earth. You know, if you can get a few books to read or something like that, that's how I relax. Or just go get with a couple of the younger guys and just have a lot of fun, and that's basically it. They tell me, I want to know if this is a true story, that the night of the championship when Danny Manning was doing his thing, they called you up and you were studying for an English exam and didn't know what was going on because your academics mean so much to you. Yeah, that's right. You know, going to Notre Dame, that's one of the top academic schools, and it, it'll be necessary to develop good study habits, and that's what I was doing tonight at the championship. Well, LaFonso, Digger Phelps has already trained you well. You're giving a lot of publicity to Notre Dame with what you just said. All I know is we got two giants, and I don't even, only mean by size. These cats can flat-out play. Keith, let's go to you, Mr. Jackson. All right, Dick. The McDonald's All-America High School basketball game will begin after this commercial. And a word from your local station. We'll be a little less than sold out at the pit in Albuquerque, New Mexico today, where the New Mexico Lobos play. And it may seem a milder sort of a setting for many of you who have been here as a member of a visiting delegation during the collegiate season. But this is aptly named it's the pit, and it's quite an attractive place. Now here is Dan Evans, the public address announcer, with the starting lineups. For the East squad at one guard from Moss Point, Mississippi, number 11, Latero Green. At the other guard, from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, number 34, Billy Owens. At center, from Chesapeake, Virginia, number 33, Alonzo Mourning. At one forward position, from Arlington, Virginia, number 36, Crawford Palmer. At the other forward position, from the Bronx, New York, number 22, Malik Seeley. The head coach from Jersey City, New Jersey, Bob Hurley. Now here are the starters for the West Squad. At one guard, from Long Beach, California, number 15, Derek Martin. At the other guard, from Los Angeles, California, number 42, Chris Mills. At center, from Hopkins, South Carolina, number 53, Stanley Roberts. At forward, from Memphis, Tennessee, number 10, Todd Day. And at the other forward position, from Elkhart, Indiana, number 40, Sean Kemp. The head coach of the West Squad from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Jim Holzman. The officials for today's game, Jim Day. So the East will be Terry wearing Vincent, the blue, and, Ragsdale, and the West will be in the white. You saw that UCLA question mark on uh, Martin. That simply means that uh, he had signed a letter of commitment to go to UCLA, and now his father says there's something screwed up with the financial aid package. Whatever that means, nobody has really defined it as yet. The Pac-10 made a statement last week. They found everything to be legally in order, which means if he doesn't go to UCLA, he sits out a year wherever he goes. If he goes to another Pac-10 school, he sits out two years. The father was over here earlier today and said the kid's not going to go. The boy has said nothing, and Jim Herrick, who has just 
taken the job at UCLA after the soap opera they had there last week apparently has not had a chance to defuse the problem if uh, there really and truly is one. Here are the game rules for today's ball game. Keith, as we look at the rules right here, they'll play a lot of the college rules, two 20-minute halves. They'll use the 45-second shot clock, no zone defense, and they'll allow them to play up and down the court. I got some statements I'd like to make on that Derek Martin situation a little bit later, but you're right. The dad told both of us that no way will he be going to UCLA. I only feel he should allow himself at least to get to know Jimmy Herrick and hear what Jimmy Herrick has to say about the UCLA program. Mills puts it up and pops it down. So Chris Mills, who's also involved in a bit of a soap opera himself, uh, knocks down the first two points of the ball game for the West. Now the East moves to the attack. This is Green, the outside lateral Green. Ball is knocked loose, and the West is running it. Day, good pass, Mills basket. Tremendous transition basketball right there. Mills shows his versatility. He can run the court as well as shoot the perimeter jumper from out of Fairfax, California, going to Kentucky. Inside ball blocked beautifully by Day, who feeds it out on a hurry, and there's a foul whistled on Latrell Green. The movement up and down the court will be pronounced. No zones allowed, as you noticed in the rules. It's a man defense, and the idea is showcase. That's really fundamentally, basically, what it's all about. And a chance for the top youngsters in high school basketball to get a chance to play against each other. Determine in their own mind just how good they might be. Kemp misses. Rebound east. Here's Green running. Missed it. Rebound comes outside to Billy Owens, headed for Syracuse. He's so versatile. Owens can pass the basketball. He can play any one of five positions on the floor. He's got a lot of Danny Manning in him. Latero Green out of Mississippi at the point. Loves to score. He's got great personality. Look at this. Shooting the jumper. Here comes Martin out of St. Anthony. That ball awfully high. Got away with a little bit of a carry. Mills misses, and the rebound tipped in by the big man, Stanley Roberts, who stands very close to seven feet and weighs somewhere in excess of 250. He is a big guy. He's got great mobility as well and very agile. They're going to love him down at Baton Rouge. Dale Brown will do a tremendous job with him in the post. This is Owens feeding inside, and you got to travel. Going up with it. And just simply couldn't turn it loose is Crawford Palmer at 6'8", and headed for Black Krzyzewski's program at Duke. He's going to be a fine player coming off the bench. He's perfect for the Duke program. Very physical, hang around the basket. He fouls a great deal, but I believe he'll learn how to play position defense under Coach K. There's an example of the quickness of Martin. Can't get it to go down, and inside, Morning for the rebound. That's his second rebound already. Here's Owens. Not a bad play there by Kemp. He rode right with him and stopped the shot. And the West moves it the other way today. Blocked and a foul. Morning got the ball, but also slammed the body. You, the gotta, you gotta love this kid. He's got a great attitude. You watch his agility right now. Now he's getting the good angle for the block shot. Once blocked, 27 shots in the game. There he goes. Looked like a great block to me. Take another look at it. Down there goes the belt buckle, though. There was some contact. The oh, they're going to love him down to Hoya Lad. John Thompson's going to put that full court, relentless pressure defense. He's going to take Alonzo, who we look at right here, put him back as the safety man, and he's going to say, come on down. Try to get to the goal. Okay, with a couple. Working off a 45-second clock. We're at 17.50 to go in the first half. And the West is out to the early lead. And that bounce pass will go out of bounds. That's a turnover. Well, one the, of the things about Alonzo Morning, Dick, and I want to say this, because I have seen in many, many instances, going back to when I started in this business in 1952, a lot of youngsters come out of high school and be great, right? They reach a certain level of development, and they don't progress any farther. Morning is a great player right now. How much farther can he progress? I think he's definitely going to pro progress down at Georgetown, especially with the style of play just like Patrick Ewing did, and I really believe, oh, look at that inside action. It's ferocious. Big Roberts clears it outside today. He's quick. And on the rebound. Lapping it up and in. 
for the West. Number 42 is Chris Mills. Mills now is six points of the ball game, and Chris that time was head high to the rim. He's a very active player. He's certainly a guy that if he could join Kemp down here on the front line at Kentucky, they're getting quite an addition. Owens finally popped one through. Carlisle Two. High School, you ready for this? Unbelievable statistic. Four consecutive state championships. That's unprecedented. Not only four state championships in a row, he started all four years under a guy by the name of Lebo, whose son Jeff plays at North Carolina. This is Green on the point to Owen. Four points now for Billy Owens, and Morning has four rebounds in the game. Well, Owens shows us again his versatility. He shows he can shoot the jump shot, he can run the court. Syracuse's Jimmy Bayheim's going to fit him in beautifully with Derek Coleman and also Sherman Douglas. They've called traveling. The officials are Jim Danner out of the Western Athletic Conference, Terry Linton and Ken Ragsdale from the PCAA. Gary Colson had all these kids walking around the New Mexico campus. I'm sure he would have rather had them on a dotted line and stay here in Albuquerque and don't let them out. Well, they've run the coaches off. There are no coaches involved today. Yesterday, they had used up their time allotment for contacts with them, so they're gone. That's Morning. Scored about gold hunting. Count it. Scored a basket. Morning is a much more efficient offensive player than a lot of people talk about. We but that would, him be, inside. that would be his uh, basic area of development, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, he really has to work a little bit more on his offensive skills. Little jump hook inside, but I believe he's got great mobility. 16.03 to go in the first half. Take a look at Alonzo Morning. We're going to see another dimension of his game. We've seen him rebound. We've seen him block a shot. There he is with a little jump hook. Not a good play right here by Sean Kemp. Stanley Roberts was playing post defense behind him, but the ball was entered by Billy Owens. Look at a pass by Owens. The excellent bounce pass. What a combination. They're going to love them in the Big East. I'll tell you one thing. The Big East recruiting class with Owens and also Morning, who we're looking at right here, has to rank as the best right now in America. New people on the court now for the West, handling the ball out out in front, number 34, that's Tegigna. He's a big guy going to Michigan State. Up at the top of the key, and missing is Sean Kemp, who stayed in the ball game, and inside a jump ball is called between Hodge of the East and uh, number 50, who is that, Eric Anderson for the West. The arrow gives the ball over to the East. Now here comes Chris Jackson, the other point guard from Mississippi. He's handling the ball out in front. Peeler, Anthony Peeler, who's headed for Missouri, is in the ball game. Inside, the shot is missed by Robert Verdan, who's headed for St. John's, and you got a traveling call. Also in the ball game, you have uh, Christian Latner, number 42 in white, who is also headed for Duke. Latner stands in at six foot ten. Martin handles it for the West. Won't go down. The rebound is off for Dan. Nope, it is not. It's off Kemp, and the East will handle the ball. You know, you mentioned where Dan going to St. John's. Archbishop Malloy had a tremendous year this year, and they got another great player, Kenny Anderson, who a lot of people say is the best guard in the United States. Ball is knocked loose and taken away by Matt Stagenga. Can't handle it, but Jackson, as the East recovers it, knocks it down. And Chris Jackson's a guy that uh, Dick was talking about at the beginning of the show, the kind of stats he had coming out of high school. Oh, look at that move inside. What a great head fake. That's the Genga. That's the Genga number 34 at 6-7. He's a very active player. Judd Heathcote's got a good one in Mr. Stagenga. He was going to go to North Carolina, but then decided to stay home. That's Peeler popping it up and getting it to count. Anthony Peeler, 6'5". He's an athlete, great jumper, going to Missouri. Martin losing control of that as yep. he got in among the trees. You know, Keith, you mentioned Martin earlier and the fact that he doesn't want to now go to UCLA. My feeling is... He any, hasn't said so. It's the father doing all the talking. Well, the father's, I guess, representing him. And my feeling is any player who signs early and there's a coaching change, he should be allowed to be re-recruited again. Look at that penetration right there. 
I know, but this, you know, this gets me in very quickly into an area of college athletics that I despise. And I think most coaches do too. It's the confounded necessity of recruiting, but the mess it brings with it. There's always some kind of a problem that comes with it. Well, I hope there's not really. I love the game too much, and it would be a black eye if any validity to the charges in the mill situation going on with Kentucky. There's got to the be papers. something there, Dick. It's got to be, doesn't it? Because well, you got people involved operating interstate commerce and understate California laws involved in that one. Uh, but uh, here's the rebound coming off into the hands of Peeler, who is a skier. He can jump, huh? Well, he's a slam jam bammer, too. He can really play out in transition. For the people out there, I guess you better document what we're talking about, Keith, in the Mills case concerning Kentucky. Well, one of the air freight companies, uh, one of the employees, found uh, a package that was open intended for the father of Chris Mills, Claude Mills, a returning a video cassette from the University of Kentucky, sent out by one of Eddie Sutton's assistant coaches. When they found the package open, they found inside $1,000 in an envelope. They brought together the number of people required under the, uh, the provisions of interstate commerce, being a bonded company, and uh, the security people were there. They resealed it. They have confirmed that there was money involved. They resealed it and was delivered. Claude Mills says he did not receive any money. The Kentucky people say they did not, did not send any money. So uh, now that you're involved with ICC rules, you're involved with state laws, you're involved with all kinds of things. So somewhere along the way, this will have to be nailed down, it would seem to me, because there are so many people involved in it. The NCAA conducting its investigation, and uh, in time, we'll eventually, I suppose, find out the truth of it. Well, I'm going to talk about basketball and get away from the investigative end of it. I have a tough enough time analyzing the game. And right there, Stanley Roberts, what a thoroughbred, playing above the rim. Here goes Peeler again. This time he runs into Big Roberts, and he presents a considerable challenge for him. And uh, one of the other young people in the ball game right now that we have not had a chance to see so far is Don McLean. Don McLean at 6'9", played at Simi Valley High School, outstanding in the western part of the country and undecided as at this moment he says where he's going to go to school. I really believe he'll end up at UCLA. He has a meeting set with uh, Jimmy Herrick. He can visit the UCLA campus. They can't recruit him actively. I think Jimmy's going to do a solid job. I know he was like the fourth choice for the job, Keith, but heck, I was the fourth choice with my wife, and I've had 17 great years. So if he can have a run like that, he'll be okay. Probably the best choice all along. Frankly, well, a lot of people in that part of the country that felt he was going to get the job uh, when uh, the decision was made to uh, make a change. Well, I'd say this for Peter Dallas. If there was any validity to all the offers, Mike Krzyzewski, Jimmy Valvano, Tom Davis, Larry Brown, they certainly went after some heavyweights and proven coaches. There's a foul. So, Martin draws the foul. He's just sort of standing there. One of the big guys, Latner, ran uh, ran over him. Really. Keith, what's your feeling on this? We mentioned Derek Martin. We just watched him in action right here. I really feel, as I said earlier, if a kid signs early with a school and a coach gets fired or he moves on for a new job for the country club and the new contract, I think the kid should be allowed to be re-recruited again for two weeks in April and let the new coach try to sign him or let him go elsewhere. Why should he be penalized and be asked to sit out a year when there's been a coaching change? Because most kids, 90% of them, pick a school because of the coach. I, I think you're right, basically. The only problem you've got with it is how do you police it? There's a whistle before the shot. No basket there. You've got 12 minutes and 34 seconds to go in the first half, and the East now, finally pecking away, has come to take the lead from the West. 17 to 16. Latner now with two personal fouls. This Jim Holzman, the coach from out of Albuquerque High School, has got quite an attractive record, as does the Eastern coach, Bob Hurley, one of the best in America. Soft pass, didn't have enough on it to get inside. They're still scrapping around over, and it's going to be East ball. Well, you don't see much strategy in all-star games. It's basically bring the ball up the court, think a little bit about passing the ball. Look at Bob Hurley's flashing signals. Bob Hurley <laughs> says, we want the two-play. They're looking, saying, what two-play? This is all-star. Let me shoot the rock. Jackson with five points, flips it inside. Peeler loses control of the ball. Good defense inside by the West. Ahead to Big Roberts, and he is fouled by Peeler. Stanley Roberts is going along with his high school coach, Jim Childers, will be joining the staff down at uh, 
LSU. I don't have a problem with that if a guy is talented, Keith. If a guy has some ability. Now watch this 6'11 kid run the court. He gets the 45 degree angle. He gets really banged on the attempt. He has to work a little bit more on the defensive end. East leads the West by one at 12.07 to play in the McDonald's All-America High School Basketball Game being held this year in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And, of course, every one of these youngsters would like to walk the kind of path that Danny Manning has been able to walk. And, of course, he ain't through before he goes on to pro ball. Every indication I have, he's going for the Olympic gold. Well, he'll definitely be our Olympic forward, and there's no doubt he'll be the first player in the NBA draft. And what a run he had during a tournament for Larry Brown. I guess I got to get ready to scrub the floor out in Lawrence, <laughs> Kansas. You do, yeah. Well, hey, wait a minute. Six months to go, and the Larry Brown soap opera will go on and on. But I see he's signing some outstanding junior college players. And getting Callaway out of Indiana. Oh. Yeah, Rick, Ricky Callaway. He's got to set out of here. Oh. Uh, Roberts shows that he needs a little work at the foul line, doesn't he? Most big kids really have to work in that area, but he's got good touch and he should be a better free throw shooter. That's morning. They say he's nothing but a defensive player. They're kidding themselves. This kid has range as a shooter as well and will have a chance to make the U.S. Olympic team, the first high school player possibly to make the club, and I mean to have a legitimate chance. That's how good he is, Keith. McLean was inside and had a clean shot on the baseline for his jump hook and get he got intimidated by uh, number 33 and he missed it. They see he's intimidated right here. He's waiting for the shot block. Alonzo wants to go get a piece of it. He says, no, I'm going to let you shoot that one. Morning with five rebounds and four points in the ball game. John Thompson's jumping with joy. I know he's watching right now. He's probably saying, that's my guy, Alonzo. Number 21, Milton Bell is in the lineup as well. Green is fouled by McLean. What quickness by Latero Green. He's got the great first step, scored 58 points against Chris Jackson, but Jackson did not guard him. Now watch this quickness. There's the first step. Oh, he hangs in the air, 40 miles apart in Mississippi, a Latero Green and a Chris Jackson. Look at the extension, the acceleration. Draw the contact. 39.7 a game, 11 rebounds a game, and nine assists. As I said earlier, did anyone else play in the game? <laughs> he had four blocking backs. Unbelievable. Four rebounders. He's got great personality. Met his principal. She's here. I was on a plane with her. She's so proud of Latero. He's also a pretty good student. Has not decided yet. It's Georgia, Georgia Tech, Clemson, and Illinois. Who puts it up off the glass and slaps it through? Stacy Poo, who'll be going on down to Florida. He'll be Play playing Norm Sloan. Norm Sloanini. I've changed his name. He's an Italian now. <laughs> but Norm Sloan's got a great recruiting class coming in. Cesar Portillo, Jose Ramos. Billy Owens misses. Rebound Bell. No. Up Mustaf, who's headed for Maryland. Mustaf can't come down with it. And the West runs it. Mayberry can't get it to drop. Fumbled away by Bell, back to Poole. Nope, slammed in there. Hard by Raymond Thompson. Thompson, an athlete, talk. Dr. Tom Davis is going to have him down at Iowa, where I believe they'll be a top-10 basketball team with Marble and Armstrong, and maybe their best player, Matt Bullard, who's a transfer from out of Colorado and an NBA, some people say, first-round candidate. Owens missed it. Oh, gets a rebound. Play. And gets a foul from a big ticket choice, Anderson or McLean, probably Anderson. What a play right there by Billy Owens. He drives, shows good speed and quickness. Look at the mobility right here. 34, Carlisle High School. There he is taking the ball to the goal. Now watch the second effort. He takes it at some big people. Now he's right inside. Good offensive rebound position. Scored 53 in the state championship against Central Catholic out of Pittsburgh. And they say at the end of the third quarter, he outscored and out-rebounded the whole team in the state championship and won four consecutive state titles. Dean Smith is still wondering what happened to his connection, right? Yeah, Jeff Lebo didn't do a job recruiting him, that's for sure. Air ball by Green. Who comes out with it. And off the back iron. Nope. West has still got it. That's Thompson losing his footing in a foul whistle, and the foul is on Billy Owens. Mayberry handling the ball inside, almost broke free. Lee Mayberry is out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the white. And Mayberry is headed for, where's he going? He's going to Arkansas, Arkansas with Todd yeah. Day. 
the outstanding player out of Memphis, Tennessee. That's a good duo they're getting down here, Nolan Richardson. McLean misses, Owens rebounds. Take it in, Green. Did you watch Billy Owens pass the rock? He gives it up, very unselfish player. Anderson. Bobby Knight's gonna like this kid, Eric Anderson. Pencil him into the starting lineup. The general's saying, hey, Vital, don't pick my starting lineup. I probably gave the kiss of death by saying he's gonna start. Morning outside. Nope. Alonzo, go inside. You don't belong on a perimeter. There's a foul. Billy Owens, silly foul, really, because uh, he never had a hold of the ball. And in reaching around, trying to get it away from Thompson, slapped him over the arm. Keith, how good is this class? To me, it's the greatest class ever, 6'5 and up. The question mark would be some of the guards. But basically, a lot of people said early this class might have been overrated. Forget about it. There are at least a half dozen impact players that are not even in the game. Keith Tower, Cesar Portillo, Mike Peplowski. These are all legitimate big people. Tower going to Notre Dame, Portillo to Florida, and Peplowski going to Michigan State. Anderson again. And Mustoff, the rebound. Tough inside when you're shooting over Alonzo Morning that really bothered Eric Anderson right there. Owens, good. He's big time. He's a ptp -er. The carrier dome will be rocking and rolling. What a trio. Douglas Coleman and Mr. Owens. He's got six points. His brother's a heck of a running back, and I know you had the Syracuse Auburn game. Uh, his brother Michael is a heck of a running back. Or Coach Mack. A little off balance, not quite enough on the shot to get it there. And the rebound by Milton Bell, who 6-6 goes to Georgetown. Owens handling outside with Bell. And Bell, back iron. The rebound, Morning had it for a moment. Owens came inside to get it, to slam it in. The Carlisle Crasher, Mr. Billy Owens. There'll be 30,000 plus every day at the Carrier Dome, one of the better environments in college basketball. Inside Anderson, doubled back to Thompson. The West, will stay in there. Nice bounce pass. Well, can't get it. Rebound, Thompson. Thompson's going to fit uh, that Iowa running game. He just ran right over Green there. Really belted him, but... The big guy can haul it. He should have given, given the ball up a yep. little sooner, Keith. Yep. But you're right. He's going to fit into the style of play with the Iowa Hawkeyes. He's an athlete. They like to run and press. Should have given it up a little bit earlier. One of the things that Terrell Green is going to have to learn, though, even though he's strong and young, little fast people lose to big fast people. In <laughs> ball game. Let's take a look at the versatility of Billy Owens. We're going to take a look at him right here, putting the ball to the deck. Remember, he's 6'8". There he is, pulling up, shooting the jump shot, squares his body, good rotation, excellent touch. And now we're going to watch him on the inside. There he is with a rebound, jamming it, shows it. There's a look at Latero putting some ice on his chin. And a look at number 34, Billy Owens. Owens, eight points and four rebounds. Morning, four points and five rebounds. That's why the East has taken a 25-22 lead over the West. West deflects the ball. Anderson breaks away. Jackson fouls him. I thought it was a little walk-in violation, but they let him get away with that one. Good anticipation. Eric Anderson steps in a passing lane from out of Chicago, Illinois. Took a little extra hop. He's going to, again, fit perfect in a Bobby Knight system. Team concept, like good, tough, tenacious defense. He'll be definitely a factor there as a freshman, along with the kid Jay Edwards, who was by far the best freshman in the Big Ten last year. That's nine fouls on the East team. At 10, you shoot a one plus one. You get in a bonus situation. West has six fouls. We talk about the Big Ten is going to be awesome again next year. They have so many key players returning. And also Illinois with the addition of Marcus Liberty, who everybody says should be eligible with Anderson and Battle. They should be an awesome team. Oh, good luck. Off the hands of Bell. Ball turned over, goes to the white clad West team. Milton Bell, 6'6 player, has got explosive jumping ability. He's going to have to work a little bit more on his perimeter shot. In fact, Georgetown has to... Oh, good back screen. Good back screen for that layup. Mayberry of Arkansas puts it in there. Mayberry's a point guard, and he'll play a lot down at Arkansas. Bad pass. 
Falk in the hands oh, of Mayberry. Oh, what a Barry. pass. Back to Stakinga. What a pass by Mayberry. Nolan Richardson, you got yourself a dandy. A Razorback. Great vision. Excellent bounce pass. And Stakinga, you got to like that kid from out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Watch him in a slam dunk contest at halftime. That's Stakinga. Palmer double teamed inside and is finally fouled by Mayberry. Crawford Palmer's going to be a physical player in the Duke system. Duke returns so many outstanding players. Danny Ferry. They have Robert Bricky, an outstanding athlete. They have some good inside people. Abdel Nabi, John Smith. The question mark will Duke. They have to find, I believe, another guard, even though Snyder is certainly a solid point guard, and Henderson's a good shooter. Where Dan inside takes a walk. Turns it over. They're having a tough time making an entry inside, getting any kind of rhythm to their half-court offensive game. Well, you've got Leitner and um, and Palmer both going in there. They figured it'd be bench people the first time out, but those are two big, strong kids. They'll get a lot of playing time off the bench and really contribute in the Mike Krzyzewski system. Jackson, that's three. Oh. Rebound inside. Goes to Ellis. LaFonso Ellis, who's headed for... Diggers Diggins of Notre Dame. What a recruiting class they've put together. Digger and John Shoemate follows out of bounds. East. See a lot of the big kids now. They see the guards coming down, shooting the J, and they say, heck, we might as well shoot it. But when they play on a collegiate level and they get into that puzzle, they'll put them right where they belong. And Mr. Ellis will be along that baseline for Notre Dame. They also got a super quick kid by the name of Keith Bennett and another good player by the name of Keith Power, 6'11 inside player. Good pass inside to Werdan by Sealy. And Sealy is fouled. Sealy's going out to St. John's for Louis Cornaseca. Played really well in the Capital Classic. Take a look right here at the grade point average of some of these kids. They showed they've done the job in the classroom as well. Leitner going to Dukes, the Genga, Michigan State, Ellis, Notre Dame, and Sealy from out of Tallentide, the number one high school team in the nation, according to USA Today, going to St. John's. You always have the feeling, too, that a kid with a great point average is going to be the first one to contribute. Well, there's no question you like that combination. You can't beat it when you have a kid who has academic success as well as athletic success. These teams are having a tough time on that free throw line. I think i got to go out there and show them how to shoot the rock, Keith. Well, you've seen me shoot it now. Uh, laugh at my shot. i got great rotation and touch. Yeah, but they put a regular-sized basket on that. <laughs> you got a bucket. When you're out there. Chris Jackson handling the ball out in front. These games are usually guard dominated. As Ellis up for the rebound, he wanted to buggy whip it the length of the court as they tried to effect a breakaway for Mayberry, and uh, he got hung up. Somebody hung him on the arm. You know, I was talking to you uh, yesterday about some of the phases these kids will go through. The expectations phase is going to be tough for a lot of them to deal with. Trying to blend in with other great players and become option number three and four, as opposed to being option number one like they've been on a scholastic yeah. level. He actually was on the out of bounds, too. So Seeley, as the East gets possession, drives in and drops it softly through for the East to make it a 28 27 East lead. Seeley's a good baseline performer. He really likes playing along that baseline. Blocking foul, we're dead. Wardan's got really good hands and good post moves inside. And with the Karnaseka system, he plays a lot of half-court basketball. Played for an outstanding coach, Jack Curran, down at Archbishop Malloy. What a track record he has put together. And they tell me, where do we see Kenny Anderson? And I'm sure he'll be in this game next year. That's 10 fouls now on the East team. So they go to the bonus. At 5.26 to go in the first half. You know, mentioning DeMatha and Danny Ferry went to DeMatha High. Morgan Wooten's going to meet Ronald Reagan in the Rose Garden next Friday. He said before he heads west and goes out to Bel Air, he wants to meet Mr. Wooten. Ready for this? He has 876 career wins. Palmer gets it to drop. He's a big horse. Oh, Nelly, he's a big horse. Yeah, he's strong. Well, the thing about so many of them, Dick, is uh, all of them seem to have the big frames. As we're Dan rolling around on the floor now, you're going to get a jump ball call on it. But here's an example where Dan looks to me like his frame is big enough just through normal development. He's going to add another 20 pounds. Yeah, he's going to get stronger. They'll get him in a weight room, and he'll get much stronger. 
when you look at the recruiting class in the Big East, we talked about Syracuse. They certainly have had, and many people believe, the best recruiting class in the nation if you just look at high school players. I believe UNLV, Jerry Tarkanian, when you consider the junior college players, is probably the best. But St. John's and Georgetown, all three of them have done exceptionally well in the Big East Conference. <laughs> where Dan went inside and the three white shirts came at him, all of them trees, and they just hammered him. I got such a kick yesterday at practice talking to a lot of these kids and watching them play. I mean, I'm just awed by the talent level. We're looking at really impact players here, kids that will step in as starters immediately. When we look at the size factors, and we're going to document it at halftime, 1979 produced some great players. You had Isaiah Thomas, who I believe has been the best point guard that I've witnessed in college basketball in my nine years on television for what he did at Indiana. But they had Wilkins and Worthy and guys like like Stepanovich and certainly Sampson and Bowie, but this class is deeper and bigger. Certainly bigger. Jackson, watch him jump. He can bounce. I'll tell you one thing, too. We hear about the recruiters and about the college coaches. What about these kids, though, that manipulate some of these recruiters? I mean, some of these kids are still open, and I really wonder. We got Green and Jackson and McLean, and these guys are drooling. Uh-oh. Mr. Sealy. Oh, I don't think there's any question but what uh, phone rings at both ends in this recruiting gig. Uh, there's manipulation at both ends. No doubt about it. The coaches get a lot of criticism, but also an 18-year-old kid. They play a little bit of the game as well. 4.02 to go in the first half. East 36, West 29. Series have been played there as well. Interesting, the MVP from last year's game would be the young Tiger, who would lead Temple to its best season ever. Yep. Mark Macon, 1987, MVP. Here's a look at that class of 79 Dick was talking about. Add John Paxson to that group as well. I'll tell you, look at that class. Thomas and Sampson and Bowie, Wilkins, Worthy, Kellogg, Stepanovich. You know, Isaiah Thomas, there's an article in a national basketball magazine that I can't believe as we look now at the class of 88, Morning, Owens, Kemp, Williams, Ellis, Jackson, and Roberts. What a class. Now take a look at Jackson. I'll get back to that story. Look at the legs right here. Great bounce off the floor. LSU or Georgetown. Now we look at Mr. Sealy going to St. John's for Louis Carnesecca. What a high riser right there. Talentine, number one in the nation. Look at Jackson, who I really call a mini Isaiah. I want to get to that Isaiah Thomas. Look at that acrobatic. Wow. Chris Mills immediately making his presence felt as he comes back into the ball game. That's Hodge, who's going to play for John Chaney at Temple. He's 6'10", 6'11", and soft touch. He's got good offensive ability. He'll step in for Tim Perry, who, by the way, is really exciting. All the NBA scouts down at Orlando played really well. Over the back, Roberts. You know, I was getting to Isaiah. What I wanted to say, Keith, and you knew I was upset yesterday. A national magazine has an article by a writer I've never talked to, don't know who he is, never met him, never called me. He's got me quoted with some negative comments about Isaiah Thomas that blew my mind. All I could say is journalistic rubbish and plain. I wish these guys, hey, I'm easy for a quote. The guy only has to do is call me up and I'll give him all the quotes he wants, but I happen to be a big fan of Isaiah Thomas. Oh, I got that off my chest. Good. Leitner. It in. Slam dunkers. And a look at some of the big men. You know, I was talking about the Big Ten, and next year the Big Ten has got some outstanding teams again. I think Illinois, Iowa, and Michigan certainly could beat all three of them in the top ten in America, certainly in my poll. And you never can count out Indiana and Ohio State with Gary Williams of Michigan State had great recruiting classes. Mills, a little late with his pass, but recovers. Now goes to Martin. Got it. Where will he be? Will he be in a UCLA uniform? Or maybe will he go to the schools that were initially involved? Initially it was Duke, Arizona, UNLV, University of Southern Cal. The big soap opera will continue with Derek Martin at UCLA. That shot is forced, rebound by Owens, missed it, and uh, slamming it home is Jared Musta. 
Gustav's got a lot of skills. Morgan Wooten was telling me last night on a roundtable discussion, he said this kid can play anywhere along the baseline. He's very agile. As we take a look at him right here, number 34, he'll be joining down in Maryland, Brian Williams, who starred in this game last year. Yep. Well, he's staying at home, too. I sort of like that. I admire that. Running cross-country, coast-to-coast. I don't know. Well, those guys in the East don't want to hear you saying that in the Big East. You want to keep those California kids home. I don't care if they want to like it or not. <laughs> it's, it, there's an inherent risk when an 18-year-old goes from coast to coast. Well, almost got it to work, but a little bit too long. Ball rolling around. Finally, it is controlled by Billy Owens. Look at Billy Owens. Look one way. What a drop. Oh! That slammed home by Hodge. You know, Hodge gets the play, but I don't know if people realized what a play Owens just made in transition at 6 8. Our producer's reading my mind. Ken Wolf, the outstanding guard for Harvard University. That's a foul on Martin. Kenny said he played at Harvard. They play basketball at Harvard? You too. I know. They had a guy by the name of James Brown, too. <laughs> Does a fine job at CBS. Played with him on that team. They had an outstanding team. <laughs> I know one thing. When you walk down the aisle and get that piece of paper, you're going places in life. Yeah. I couldn't spell Harvard, so I couldn't get in. The only chance I could get in is to visit. Take a look at Owens. He looks one way, kicks it another way. Uh, we're going to look again at Mr. Owens as we watch the drive right here, and Hodge comes over. Hodge going with John Chaney, who was my choice as coach of the year this year. I thought Chaney, when you look from out of the gate to what he did at the finish, had a fantastic season. And we all know about Mark Shake and Bacon Bacon, who played in this game last year. Where does Owens play for uh, Behar? Anywhere he wants, <laughs> anytime he wants, any place he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Derek Coleman, I hope he doesn't sulk and pout because Mr. Owens is going to get the rock in his hands a great deal, and Coleman sometimes is his biggest enemy. Day picks off the loose rebound for the West. Can't get it. And finally, the East comes out with it. Bell on the move. Peeler, he's loose. Oh, Mr. Peeler, throw it down. Missouri, Norm Stewart says bye-bye to the Band-Aid man, Chivas, and now he gets Peeler. Coach Holtzman wants time out. Good reason. Minute 52 to go in the first half, and the East threatening to blow it wide open with a 16-point lead, 49-33. to Well, we looked at the rosters, and you could sort of see the out-of-balance. Bob Early says, I love this squad. Take a look at it right here. Oh, nice dribble move to get around, a little yo-yo move to get free for the slam. <laughs> East is loaded. These kids get flat out play. Up, up, and away. They have lived up to their building, Mr. Jackson. These kids are for real. Let's go, right now. So we get it inside. If they double it, they adding on to the heat, though. No pressure. Look at the size of the team right now. Eight, three seconds. What was the answer? What uh, you inquired? One, two, you inquired as if, uh, where do you go to rest? Go on to accept the version. We take a look at Bob Hurley. Bob Hurley has an outstanding team coming back next year. As we look at him right here, and it's going to be headed by his son, Bob Hurley Jr., who a lot of people rate as one of the top ten players in the United States. They'll be after him. But where does uh, where do these young people go now between now and the time they matriculate at college? Is there going to be a time, a respite for them to take a deep breath? Not really. They're going to be playing a lot of all-star games. And, you know, the good thing about the NCAA rules, Keith, years ago, kids can play in as many all-star games as possible. Now they can only play in two. And to me, sometimes, you know, they got to realize this. Oh, look at that move inside. A lot of people try to exploit these kids and get them involved in all kinds of situations. But most of these kids, getting back to your question, will play around their area in different summer leagues. I'm sure Mr. Morning will be going to the Olympic trials. Well, I'm sure he will, too. Uh, but there are other times when a coach uh, who you've invested so much of your future in a young person like this, and the young man's future is also invested, I guess uh, there must be a moment of persuasion where you don't really want him bopping around playing in too many games, do you? Well, you want him to certainly be fresh when the season starts. Emotionally, if nothing else. And May with that long-range jump shot. The game is such a highly specialized game now where kids are playing 12 months a year with all these specialized camps. And I really believe that's the reason that we see the skill level getting better and better. 
Bell spins it off oh. the baseline. Ding dong, Bell. Not too bad. Six, Not six. He's out of Richmond, Virginia, going out to Georgetown. Kemp, power move. Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp from out of Elkhart, Indiana. Took his team to the final game. A big time scorer. There he is working on the interior, taking it right up home. I mean, he is taking it to the goal. They dump it in. Now watch him right here. Number 40, good hands, super strength. His problem is that he tries to be a little bit too much a perimeter player and a finesse player instead of getting on the interior. Now 12 point difference, 53 41, a half a minute to go in the first half. Whistle inside, and a foul. You know, Keith, getting back to the kids playing all year long, there are some positives about these All-Star games, but there are some negatives as well. There's no question, for example, kids missing class, but when you talk to the people involved, they have such a schedule for the kids, they get a chance to hear John Wooden speak. That's worth, I don't know, you know, to me, that's just unbelievable to hear his pyramid of success and what a winner's all about as we look at Coach Wooden, 10 national championships in 12 years, the greatest achievement, I believe, ever in sports. And so there are a lot of positives, but there are some negatives, and uh, the negatives, kids signing autographs at age 16 and 17 and 18, their heads get blown out of proportion. And we're guilty. I know I'm guilty. There's no question about That's it. Why I asked you what I asked you a while ago. Where yep. do you have a chance to go just rest and uh, be yourself before you go off to that collegiate adventure, which is uh, ain't a gimme going to college. <laughs> well, they should let the kids not play as freshmen. They should really have freshmen adjust to college life and not be eligible immediately. Muskoff trying to give it inside. Ball still rolling around, and now you got a foul whistle. Hey, is he taking this serious? Look at Jim. Hulsman, he's got the glasses on. He's from out of Albuquerque High School. Look at him right here, scratching his head. Yeah, his folks are down by 10. He said he couldn't believe it yesterday. All the kids were signing autographs, and nobody was asking him for an autograph. <laughs> now we watch him trying to post inside. There's the base. Look at the coach. Look at Hulsman. He's thinking this is a legitimate season. Look at that move along the baseline. So acrobatic. Morning to the line. Rebound taken out of there by Roberts. The half is over. Well, and the East will go to the clubhouse, leading the West by 10 points at halftime, 53 to 43. And the only player not to score on either team in the first half, LaFonso Ellis, but he'll get his, I'm pretty sure, in the second half. Slam dunking and big people, halftime subject. the pit in Albuquerque, New Mexico for McDonald's All-America High School basketball game with the East team leading the West by 10 points, 53 to 43 in a game that started uh, lopsided for the West. The East turned it around as Morning and Owens and their big people started to take control of the backboards. Big people always mean slam dunks, right? Well, it's getting to the point now where little people are getting into the slam dunk business too. Let's join Dick Vitale now as we have a look at the slam dunk competition between these high school All-Americans. This is slam dunk contest time. It's show time. This is the preliminaries. They're getting a little warmed up, getting ready for the real action where each dunker will get three dunks at Albuquerque High School. We're watching some of the great high school players do their thing, and the fans love it here in Albuquerque. And now four guys made it to the finals. Let's get ready for the slam dunk competition. Lafonso Ellis heading out to Notre Dame, 6-9. We're going to see their best dunk. Here goes Lafonso. Digger's going to love him. It's power time. Rock and roll. Take another look at Lafonso. He hangs in the air. It's hang time. Bam! What an unbelievable talent. Mind-boggling. And now we take a look at Chris Jackson, the making of a little Isaiah Thomas. He's 6-1. I wonder if Isaiah can do this. Watch the timing right here. Off the glass, a reverse slam. Awesome. With a capital A, Chris Jackson from out of Gulfport, Mississippi. Watch his head right here. Look at this jumping ability. Remember, he's 6-1. Now we take a look at contestant number three. And here we go with Chris Mills, 6'6 and a half, going out to Kentucky. 
the high riser from out of Los Angeles, California, Fairfax High School. You talk about agility and mobility. Everybody's silent. There goes Mr. Mills. He's going to fly over two players. Look at that high skywalking job. Mr. Chris Mills. They can't believe it. A little high fives. You talk about talent, baby. This is talent. They're flashing some of their tens up there at Albuquerque High School. Now we take another look at Mills. Here he goes flying through the air over two bodies. Up, up, and away. Slam, jam, bam. Now it's high five time. And now we're going to take a look at the ultimate winner, the champ, going out to Judd Heathcote land, Michigan State. That's the Genga. The Genga now looking at Derek Martin. Derek Martin a little nervous, sitting down. Do you blame him? Look at him, a little smile on his face. He'll cover his face. Here goes the Genga. Oh, now you can see why Dean Smith was brokenhearted. But the Genga said, no, Dean, I'm going to Michigan State. Derek Martin says, I love it. I wonder if he'll give Martin half the trophy. Take a look at the Genga. There he goes. Up, up, and away. He won it. That took place Thursday night. There are your final standings in your slam dunk contest with Stagenga winning it. Mills, Jackson, and Ellis in that order. Well, you made the comment as we came to the close of the half that uh, the Eastern team in particular, and you cited Owens and Morning in particular, specifically, that they had proven out to be as advertised. Well, they're for real, Keith. There's no doubt about it. I mean, these kids are solid gold players. People have been evaluating and really putting them to the test for the last few years, and they've met every test. And I believe they'll meet the test on a collegiate level. I think when they play on a collegiate level, they are instant impact players. Morning is such a dominator. His intimidation ability. I I believe he has a great chance to be the first high school player to make the United States Olympic team. And not just because John Thompson's the coach, but because of his ability. I believe he can play with the big guys that play on a college well, level. Well, he's going to have to be awfully good because uh, just the fact that John is going to be his collegiate coach, if he is not a dominant player, then John will probably get some criticism for it. Chris Jackson taking it up, up, and down the bottom. <laughs> In every town in America, there's always one place that does a Three, East leads the West in the McDonald's All-American High School basketball game at halftime. Despite the growing impact of the three-point play, and uh, it seems to me the near certainty that somewhere down the road we're going to get a widening of the free throw lane to handle the big people, the big man is still the man in all levels of basketball. Uh, of the 24 players that we're watching today, we made this point early on. The 12 of the 24 stand 6, 9, or better. And that's big for teenagers. When you talk big men in basketball, you have to talk about people like Bill Russell, both in USF as a collegian and the Boston Celtics. Those back-to-back -back collegiate titles giving a glimmer of what was to come when Russ became the legend with the Celtics. Because it was there, his defense became part of their offense. And then there was Wilt. His great size and strength made him the game's greatest scorer. He could totally dominate a game. And Lou Alcindor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, came as yet another kind of big man, a blending of talents, including running the floor with speed and agility. And now, the new crop. Lafonso Ellis, 6'9", 220, and obviously still growing. He loves to bang the boards. Averaging 19 rebounds per game in his senior year, he's headed for Notre Dame. And this big guy, Donald Hodge, at 6'10", is headed for Temple. He weighs about 210, but he'll add some weight. He's got a big frame. His favorite food is lasagna, so I imagine John Cheney of the Temple Owls will let him uh, have some lasagna to put on some more beef around the boards. Jared Mustoff at 6'10 and about 220 will play for Bob Wade at Maryland, staying at home, if you will. Morgan Wooten, who helps run this game, was uh, Mustoff's high school coach, and he thinks the potential here is almost unlimited. Christian Leitner at 6'10, 215 pounds, and he's a big rangy guy that could easily carry another 15 or 20 pounds. On top of that, he's going to Duke with a straight four-point grade average. And Stanley Roberts at 6'11. He's headed for LSU. He may want to drop some pounds, but he is rated the best true center coming out of high school basketball this year. Though it would seem that he may have to learn to bang the boards 
and play inside with a little more authority. And then there is this man. Alonzo Mourning at 6'10", 230, perhaps the most complete player of this group at this time, and perhaps the most advanced. But moving to the next level of competition, it's going to be very interesting to watch these young, big men as they grow up in the game of basketball. Sometimes some surprise you. They grow higher than you thought they might. All right, now, Dick, there have been a lot of people uh, that have been called, well, Webster was called the eraser, I mean, uh, going on and on and on and on, guys coming out of college, but not very often do young people come out of high school with a reputation for shot blocking that Morning had. Unbelievable. You know, the other day, great conversation. I introduced Alonzo to Red Orbach at the Naismith Banquet, and Red Orbach brought him over, and he had the cigar, as only Red can do, and Red says, I hear you block a lot of shots. He says, yes. He said, but I had a fear of shot blocking by the name of Bill Russell. He says, yes, I heard about him from John Thompson. He said, let me tell you about Russell. When Russell blocked the shot, the ball stayed in play. He would bring the ball back, and we would get the transition game and get a layup. He said, Alonzo, don't hit the ball and knock it in the third deck. Well, Alonzo stood there in awe, and I could just see the look on his face. And, and the other day, I had a conversation with John Thompson and with Bill Russell. And I said, Russell, he blocked 28 shots. You know what he said? He said, that's bad defense. He said, if you're blocking shots, he said, that means the other guys aren't playing good defense. And he said another time, he blocked eight and one quarter in the NBA, and he turned to his teammates after blocking eight. He said, hey, fellas, he said, you're playing poor defense. I should be blocking that many. But I'll tell you one thing. If this kid could only be half, remember this about Bill Russell. He has more rings than we have fingers for championships. And I think we're a little too quick, and I know I'm guilty probably more than anyone, Keith, when I say the mini version of Isaiah that we start to talk about these kids in the terms of the great, great players. But Alonzo certainly got a head start on a lot of people. He's got a world of potential. Yeah, and you're, you're right. You're just adding pressure. Oh, <laughs> we'll be right back. Had a great basketball year this year. He got a commitment the other day from the kid by the name of Orlando Vega, who was the most valuable player in the Dapper Dan from out of Virginia, played at Oak Hill. Hey, three great things happened for Mr. Olsen on April 8th. He got Vega. He had Sean Elliott say he's staying in school. And Larry Brown said no to the UCLA job. Not that, hey, Jimmy Herrick's going to do a great job. He's going to have those guys a little worried in the Pac-10. Anderson tries to take it to the board. Doesn't get it the first time. Stays with it and slams it home. And it's now an eight-point difference to the ball game as the East comes up. Handling the ball is Latell Green. Alonzo Mourning is out there. Mustaf is out there. Seeley is out there. Shot comes off. Slapped into the corner. West has it. Breakaway. Thompson. Seeley back defending. Thompson blows it. And the rebound comes off to Leitner. And now the blue-shirted East team with a chance underneath. Reverse slam by Morning, and their lead is back to 10. Morning, very physical, but what an outstanding play we just had on the other end defensively by Eric Anderson. He's a tenacious player out of St. Francis de Sales, out of Chicago, Illinois, going to Bloomington, Indiana. There's a foul inside, and the foul is whistled on number 42 of the blue team. That's Christian Leitner. Leitner, very strong player. He's also a finesse player as well. He's got the good body, had some great numbers out of Nichols High School, out of Buffalo, New York. Raymond Thompson brings it into the corner. Poole puts it up. It is no good. Anderson runs it down on the baseline. Don McLean is out there for the West team. McLean's been really quiet. I don't believe he's scored yet today, and he's wide open. I think he's going to UCLA. Poole, got it. Stacy Poole, they're going to like him down in Gainesville, Florida. They got an excellent recruiting class. In fact, I would go the Big East, the Southeastern Conference, and the Big Ten as having the three best classes coming in next year to college basketball. Florida season unraveled on them, didn't it? This year? Oh, yeah, they really had. You talk about a soap opera. There's a good baseline drive right there. Jared Mustaf. He's got great quickness for a 6'10 player. Ooh, Lancers. Cool. Norm Sloan's got to like him. They need somebody to replace Vernon Maxwell. I was sad to learn about Maxwell's problem with cocaine. And the one good thing, at least he's being honest about it. Now he's going to have to attack that problem head to head. Look at How that you like that move by Seeley, huh? Yeah, Seeley, a quick player. He's Six little, points. Little Louie's going to like having him down at St. John. Poole answers. That's twice in a row. Stacy Poole has come down within your face. Yeah, Stacy Poole really waking up right here in the second half. I believe is his third basket, two in a row here in the second half. 59-51, East by eight. 
17.45 to go in the game. This little Terrell Green works to the baseline and runs into a very tall gentleman named McLean there. And McLean literally arrests him, body and soul. McLean is an excellent shooter. He's got great range as a shooter. Here comes Latero Green. They said, no, this is not Mississippi, baby. He slips. They said, this is not high school. you got to play with us big guys. Latero said, hey, nobody cleared out for me. Jump ball, possession arrow east, so they don't lose it. There's inside the three-point line by Seeley. But he drops it softly through, and now he's got eight points. Well, he was 10 for 12 in a Capital Classic. It was the MVP. He played brilliantly along. I'm not sure now. I'll take that back. I'm not certain he got the MVP. I think Latero Green was the MVP. In fact, I'm told Latero did get the MVP. All right, East will handle the ball. He's got a certain amount of cockiness about him. He's one of those old Muhammad Ali kind of guys I talk about, like Derek Chivas. And they go out and they really back it up, and I believe he can back up his little talk. That's a bad pass by Leitner. He's trying to lob it inside uh, to Mustoff, but he, Mustoff is uh, Day fronting him, and Day's a leaper. That's a Marconi special. He telegraphed that baby. Yep. Got to put some mustard on it if you go. Try to go that tight inside. You know, you mentioned Stacy Poole in Florida. The key down there is Dwayne Shinsis. It's about time he starts to mature a little because he's got, again, a lot of potential, but he's so up and down. And his maturity will determine how far and how good they'll be. Todd Day loses control and turns it over to the Blue East team. So Todd Day at 6-7, headed for Arkansas has a turnover. He's out of Memphis, Tennessee. Well, Bob Gibbons of the All-Star Report really rates him very high. He's a real big fan of Mr. Day. When you look at his numbers, you can see why out of Memphis, Tennessee. That time, Leitner tried to whip it to Seeley down inside on the baseline. Almost worked. But he needed a Magic Johnson sort of a bullet to get through the pack. There's only one Irvin Magic Johnson. He's a winner every long he's been. Look at that strength. And morning is fouled by Anderson. You know, the amazing thing when you talk about Georgetown, they're not only getting Mr. Morning, they have a junior college player who's going to be eligible by the name of Turner, and they have another kid from Zaire. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but John Thompson, every time he sees me, he says, Dick, I'm telling you, Macombo, Macombo. And I asked Morning about him, and I guess Morning's seen the kid Brian. He's a, he's a seven-footer who's got good quickness. And then he has all those other kids back, Bryant, and also oh, this little good-looking guy. They got Bryant back, and they have Tillman back, and a kid by the name of Anthony Tucker. So it should be a big, big year for Georgetown. I'm laying a pressure on Mr. Thompson. He doesn't worry about pressure. I'll tell you, he's a Hall of Famer. He just goes out and wins and wins and wins. 62-51 East. Anderson has it in the paint. Blocked by Leitner. Foul by Leitner. He's tenacious, Mr. Anderson. He's a, got a lot of tenacity. He's a tough kid. Comes out of St. Francis to Sales High School in Chicago. Here's the drive, seals it off, keeps the ball away from the defense, gets the body contact. And it's four fouls on Leitner. It's nice to see him use the left hand, ambidextrous right here, shooting free throws. That's an art of the game that kids have to work a little bit more on. You gotta be like an automatic here, so you can't shoot 50% of that free throw line. You gotta make both of those. Like putting. You want to play with the big boys, you got to putt. Blocked inside. Latero just keeps... Morning. It. Nope. Well, that's Seeley slipping in. Sneaky, strong, and quick inside, isn't he? You know, it's amazing here. The talent level is so good that these kids neutralize some of the great, great talent that's on the floor. Three-pointer won't drop. Mayberry. Oh! Oh, give him five! That's night's the rules committee. Give them five for that acrobatic shot. Degree of difficulty. Look at Latero, the great smile. This kid's a politician. If he doesn't make it in basketball, I really believe he could become a politician. He's very articulate. Look at this move right here. He hangs. He twists. That's a Keith Jackson special. Oh, Nelly, it's going in. <laughs> Not bad. 
Kind of interesting. Green, on the other hand, comes down. Got a little hot dog showed up that time as he was going to answer, right? Oh, you got to put a lot of mustard on Mr. Green. I tell you, you got to load it up with relish sauerkraut New York style. He landed in the cheerleaders' laps. Got a foul. That's not too bad landed the there. <laughs> no, you're right. Chris Jackson replaces him. There's a nice effort by Bell, but it won't drop. And West has the ball. I'm going to give you my preseason top ten. In the next few moments, we're going to come out with our top ten for next year. Alfonso Ellis misses off the back iron, but Anderson runs it down for the West. Ellis is so much better than what we've seen here today. And the left-hander won't go. He led his high school to two state championships, double A. Look at this, give it up. Oh, yeah, gave the rock up. That's goaltending. Ellis. That is goaltending. He gave the rock up, just like one of the Damon Runyon figures in basketball always says. Tutti Siriccione. I introduced you to him one time down in Vegas. He says he gives up the rock. There it is. He gave the rock up. And for Billy Owens, that's 10 points. 12-point lead East. Rebounds East with 49. Owens 8, West with 33, that's why they lead by 12. Look at the field goal percentage. The reason it's so down is because you don't have that great rhythm offensively in that togetherness. Well, Ellis took his time. If he'd have taken that pass and just slammed it, he'd, uh, he'd have been all right. But he wanted to kiss it all oh. fast, and he got trapped and lost the basket opportunity. What a pass right there by Billy Owens. He really is a master of that bounce pass on an entry from the 45-degree angle. A very difficult pass to make, and he's 6'8". He went between the legs twice. What a bounce pass we just seen by this guy. Stagenga is back in. Poole back in for the West. Mayberry goes to the line on the tee. Hanging on the bucket. The rim. Anderson stays out there, and uh, so does Ellis. You know what really impresses me about Owens and, and Morning Keith, and I know you like this in athletes, help, help. they're very unselfish. They're not greedy. Help, they're not help. just trying to score. They're trying to do all the little things that it takes to win. Pass the basketball, rebound, block shots, play defense. There's a block there by Bell, but picked up by Poole, and comes outside to Werdan. It's the Billy show. The dandy from outside, but the point on Owens is he gave up the ball right there. Now, perfect example of it. He's he's got the accolades. He knows where he's going. He knows who he is. He's a mature young player. He knows he knows himself. So why not give it up? Yeah, he really does have an awareness of the game. He's got great basketball savvy. That's Peeler. That time it won't roll for him. Peeler's going to be Mr. Excitement in a Big Eight. What a year the Big Eight had this year. The big question mark is the replacement of all the great seniors that are moving on. The Mannings, the Grayers, the Richmonds, the Harvey Grants. Ellis, back to Poole. Stacy's That's not foul on Poole, huh? Stacy's not bashful, is he? No, you're not. He's not bashful. He says, hey, i got to get some of my shots up there, too. He had a great career in Jacksonville, Florida. Played out of Nathan Forrest High School. 20 points a game, 10 rebounds a game, 6-5 with lots of quickness. Right, Poole is leaving. And Raymond Thompson is coming back for the West team. McLean comes back. Anderson goes out for the West. You know, we talk about Billy Owens going to Syracuse. They also have an athlete, 6'5", from out of Louisiana, David Johnson, Anthony Scott from Rochester, New York, 6'7". Chris Seattle. Jackson, line drive. That time it wouldn't go down. Here comes Ellis again. He's yet to score. Gives it up to McLean. Oh! oh. <laughs> and that is just peeled out of the air by Milton Bell. Oh! You like that? Oh, Mr. Jackson with a little English on it. McLean, that's the thing he does best. He can catch the ball, and he's an excellent perimeter shooter. He has to work a little bit more on getting tougher and being a better rebounder. 13-point lead right now for the East as Jackson goes again. Chris Jackson, I watched him at Sonny Vaccaro's Dapper Dan, and he's just as good today as he was then. An automatic scorer. Ellis, foul. Take a 
look right now. We're going to watch Chris Jackson as he gets the ball. There's the ball now to Jackson. Here he comes from out of Gulfport, Mississippi. Look at the hang time. Look at the body control. And then the English. And that's why he scored 31 points a game. You want to talk about a chief? Alonzo Mourning, three years in a row, was voted the most outstanding player at Howard Garfinkel's five-star basketball camp. No one has ever, ever done it. The only player in 22 years, and they've had every great player there you can think about, from Moses Malone right down the line. Here's some of the fans at the pit. This L is up for the rebound as Ellis misses. This is a great home court advantage. When they had those red hankies flying, they get 17,000 plus. Gary Colson's averaged 21 games a year that he's won in his last five years. Beat Arizona, as we talked about earlier, in that big win for New Mexico. Taylor gives it up to Werdan. Werdan was kind of surprised. He said, Anthony. That's probably your first assist in the last two All-Star games. Anthony said, oh, it's about time I give the rock up a little bit. I like Anthony Dealer, though. East is blowing it open now. 17-point lead at 12 and a half minutes to go in the ball game. The plane can't get it. Ball rolls on the floor. It's picked up inside by Spaginga, and he's fouled. Spaginga will play immediately up at Michigan State. They need a lot of help. And Judd Heathcote, again, had a tremendous recruiting class. Not only Stegenga, Mike Peplowski at 6'10", Joe Zuloff at 6'7", John Rather, Mark Montgomery, 6'3", Gord, and Parrish Hickman, a 6'7", forward from out of Redford, Michigan. There's Stegenga, out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Slam jam dunk winner. That's a three-point play, and it's 75-61 now. 14-point lead for the East. Chris Jackson handles it out in front. Well, whether he goes to LSU or Georgetown, he'll hook up either with Roberts or with Morning. What a combination. That'll be inside-outside over the next four years. Owens misses. Ellis, another rebound. Mayberry on the move. Challenges the big man. Owens. And Powell. Owens. Well, he took it right to his number, didn't he? Look at Billy Owens, number 34. Winner with a capital W. He's got a lot of the traits of the Magic Man. Win, win, and win. Four consecutive state championships. Look at Billy Owens coming over. He's trying to get the block right here using the left hand, which is the hand you want to in that situation. Four consecutive state championships. Dave Lebo. I mean, you talk about quite an achievement. That's unbelievable. Yeah, but that was 6-2 Mayberry taking it up over. Billy Owens, who stands 6'8". You like that right there, huh? You like yes. that achievement. You love it. Like I saw your face smile when the little guy took it at the big people. It's gizzard. You like all those underdogs. <laughs> a play like that will win a game for you. Oh, look at these right here. Uh, cuties. Big powwow went on here yesterday over the weekend. Didn't he finish until about 2.30 this morning. Oh, she's the biggest Indian powwows in the West. She's adorable. They're adorable. I want to put one of those costumes on and do a little powwow. Please, please. <laughs> we have peace at the moment. Let's leave it. <laughs> <laughs> really exciting to watch. It was quite a halftime show. It was excellent. Did you see it yesterday? This building was filled with it. Yeah, it was. Really something. 75-62, just under 12 minutes to play now. Hodge. And a whistle. Traveling before the shot. Called on uh, Malaxini. Owens is out of the game right now. Leads our basketball game. The East in the blue, leading 75 to 62, and here's Dick Vitale's preseason top 10. So what? there you are, <laughs> videotape it, write it down quickly, and stick it. Subject to change, though, it's so <laughs> early in the year. Mike Krzyzewski saying, no, Dick, not number one. But I like Duke. I like their defensive ability. I like the people returning, and Danny Ferry's an All-American. Illinois with Marcus Liberty, Georgetown. I mean, we're looking at some dynamite clubs. It'll be another year of greatness in basketball, and Vegas has got a host of new kids. David Butler, Moses Scurry, George Ackles out of the junior college ranks. Greg Anthony will be eligible. They ju they're going to have a great team, Jerry Tarkanians. You hope they'll be eligible. Well, Greg Anthony can really play. Jerry told us that potentially he thinks he's the best guard he will ever coach. And Wait, he'll let me ask you a question. Uh-oh, don't be tough on me now. <laughs> don't be tough. 
Why do you, as uh, the big guy Roberts works it inside, why do you open yourself to all the abuse you know you're going to get? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess I like it. There's a look again at the top ten. Carolina number five with J.R. Reed. Kenneth Williams is not in the game, but if he is eligible, he's going to be a great addition to North Carolina, an offensive machine. Freed, I've been good to him. I put him number six rather than number one this year. But with Mr. Mills coming back and everybody else, Glenn Rice, Neil Robinson, getting Sean Higgins back, Michigan it will be very good. Al Martin hasn't done much today. Mills, on the other hand, has. Chris Mills active inside. You talked about the Eminem boys involved in a lot of controversy. Mills and Martin. Green hustling. Ooh, a little air ball. Not really playing well today, Latero Green. Not having the kind of game he's capable Mills, Mills lost it, keeps it. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. I guess everybody else in Albuquerque thought he should give it up. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, if Rex Chapman's in front of him next year in Lexington, he don't give it up. Those blues out of Ruffle will rub. I'll tell you what, if he doesn't give it up at Kentucky next year, he'll be on the pine. Woo! They have some players down there. Leron Ellis, and Kentucky's certainly going to be very good. There's a look at Bob Hurley. I really believe he should be coaching on a collegiate level. He really is an outstanding coach, Keith. I spoke at his camp years and years ago when he gave me $20 and a ham and cheese sandwich, and I had a great time, and I knew right then he was going to be a winner. East ball at 10 minutes and 36 seconds to play, and the East leading by 11. You know, there aren't any coaches here, and you alluded to it earlier, because the contact and evaluation period ended April 16th. There's now these recruiting periods. And, oh, good look inside. Now, well, Sean Kemp was right there to take the play away from Crawford Palmer. There's some, there's some positives as we look right here. they got a little triangle set up. There's the triangle, two guys on a box, the ball up on top. There's Kemp coming over to challenge him, but fouls him on the play. Our crowd, incidentally, is 12,815. There's some positives about the recruiting periods, which really don't allow the assistant coaches to live with the kid and see him a great deal. But there's some negatives. The negatives are the borderline player now. Everybody knows that these guys right here are solid gold. But what about the borderline player that you have to see a number of times before you determine if you can play Division I? I mean, you take a look, for example, at guys that Percy Hawkins, he wasn't a McDonald's All-American, David Robinson, Armin Gilliam, and a host of others that you need time to evaluate. So there's a negative, and the lower Division I schools get hurt because there's no way they can recruit a player of this quality on three contacts home and away. But at the same time, everybody doesn't mature at 18. No doubt about it. When I say home and away, you allow three contacts with a player in his home, and you're allowed three away from his home. And it's good in a way, though. It reduces the number of times you can really disturb the young athlete, let him enjoy his senior year. I think the positives outweigh the negatives. Mustaf inside has it checked away by Kemp. Good play by Sean Kemp. And look at him run it down the middle. He keeps it coast to coast. It missed it. Oh, my goodness. Roberts at 200 and 70 pounds. Woo. Really hammered it in there. And uh, Crawford Palmer looks like he's shaking up. What a play by Sean Kemp. The problem is he tries to be a perimeter player. Here he is now. We're looking at a 6-9. Look at him handle the rock. I mean, there he is right now, a little twist, little turn, and here comes Mr. Roberts, number 53. He said, let me take this one. I'm taking it right home. Boy, is he strong at 270. <laughs> Woo. I don't know if he's that big or not, but he could be. He's a lovable kid, too. He's got great personality. He's another yeah. version of Bob Lanier, the big dauber who I had a chance to coach. I'm not sure that Dale Brown is interested in all that lovable stuff. <laughs> There's a look at Jim Holzman. He's having a ball down here. From out of Albuquerque, head coach of the West. That's four personal fouls now on Sean Kemp. Sean's been active here in the second half, the last 10 minutes, That's six minutes actually. At 76 64, 12 point lead East. Martin almost stole that ball, but they get a gimme inside on a little bit of a mishandle, and Seeley winds up uh, with an easy one. Seeley really knows how to play around the basket. He hangs around the glass. He's a good active player along that baseline. Ah! 
Martin begging his case and winds up eating it. But Taylor steps on the line as he starts to come out of backcourt with it. It's going to be interesting staying tuned to that Derek Martin situation. But it was an interesting comment made by the dad to me. He said there's been no communication yet between Jimmy Herrick and Derek. I really believe when Jimmy Herrick gets a chance to sit to talk to him and get to know him, that there's a chance there's a trifecta right there. But I really believe when he sits down and looks at all the ultimate possible options that he might still be in a UCLA uniform. Ball knocked loose. Day comes out of it with a yeah. West on the run. They just came off a three-pointer, and there's a two-pointer that won't go down, and the blocking foul is called on Palmer. I wouldn't want to play horse against a lot of these kids. The agility <laughs> and the body control. I mean, you want to shoot the little one-hander. I don't know how you can duplicate some of the things that we see. All-American mania. Todd Day. 6-7 guard. Look at this. Swing man from Memphis. How are you going to duplicate that? Unbelievable. He has 10 points, a quiet 10 points. You know, Seeley has 12 points to lead the East team. That's a quiet 12. Back iron. We talked about some trivia last night. Here's some trivia for the people out there. Morgan Wooten, Howard Garfinkel, yours truly, and a bunch of others were sitting around. Who led the nation in scoring on the only national championship team? Little hint, came out of the big eight. Another hint, a little acrobatic inside, Clyde Lavelle. You know Big Clyde going to the Hall of Fame. Now nine as Peeler brings it down for the East. Hey, the pit's waking up here. They're rooting for the West. Oh, oh, goaltending. Where's the call? There it is. Roberts was just a little late. No, she doesn't like it. Look at her. She doesn't like the call. She's part of the Kansas delegation. They want the McDonald's game next year in Kansas City over at Kemper. Oh, that's goaltending, no doubt about it, by Mr. Roberts. 11-point game now at 8.40 to go. The crowd's finally woke up here. Yep. Roberts inside. Got it. Oh, he can score, Keith. Dale Brown's got himself a good one, and Mr. Roberts. And Dale can motivate. You talk about one of the great motivators. Stolen by Martin. Give it back to the trailer. Goaltending. Score the goal. He got foul too. Score the basket. No, they won't score it. Oh. Score the goal and give him the foul. Yeah, I agree with that fan up in the third deck. Take a look at Martin now. He takes it to the goal. Here comes the little guy. Will he be at UCLA? There's the goaltending. Take a look at Jimmy Hulsman. Is he into this? Look at him. He says, I love it. Count it. I like his hairstyle. I love that crew cut. Mine used to be like that. I wore one like that for 25 years. Woo! Loved it. You can scratch with all the comfort in the world, right? Yeah, I like mine too, but I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> 8.21 to go, and it's now an eight-point lead. He's, he's sort of dozed off here, and the West now getting some good board work. Has come back. A couple of three-pointers helped them. Crowd now into it. They are into it. They're saying, go west, young man, go west. Must stop to the baseline. Messed up inside by Sean Kemp. Must has got that great first step. When he hooks up with Brian Williams and also Tony Massenberg, a strong inside player, Rudy Archer. Unfortunately, they're losing a good small forward by the name of Steve Hood, who maybe will be with the left-hander, Lefty Drizel, over at James Madison. All right, Hurley now is sending his hammer throwers back in as Holtzman takes out Roberts for the West, but Billy Owens, Alonzo Mourning, Leitner, Bell, they're all back into the lineup for the East. Owens, let me tell you, Bob Hurley is an unbelievable competitor. He wants the W. Look at him, look at him, look at Bob Hurley. He said, come on, come on, figure that out. I can't figure out what he's doing. He's looking like one of those wacky football coaches. Inside, Alonzo Mourning. Fouled. I think it's LaFonso Ellis who got a piece of him that time. One of the great reasons why Alonzo, I really believe, is going to keep getting better and better, you asked that in the first uh, part of the show, Keith, is because of attitude. He's got an unbelievable attitude. His coach, Bill Lassiter, has done a fantastic job with him on a scholastic level. Look at those numbers. Can't buy the free throw, though. Looks to me like there's some folks in the crowd that know how to work the fit. 
This place must be something else. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> Ask Lou Olson. He'll tell you about this place. And about 400 other guys. <laughs> 81-73, 8.07 to go in the game. Day survives a bump. Nope, he didn't either. Jim Diner caught him down on the baseline. Look at Jim. Milton yeah. Bell gets dinged with a foul. We're taking a look at a mini version of Judd Heathcote right here. Hey, Judd, I thought you are not supposed to be coaching here. That's Judd Heathcote. Look at him. Stomping and screaming and ranting and raving, but I love it. I love that enthusiasm and spirit. Nothing wrong with it. It's not war and A lot of games at Albuquerque High School, hasn't he? Ooh. Hey, good. Day and Mayberry are quite a duo to get down at Arkansas. They coming out of Memphis, Tennessee, would have produced so many great high school players. Larry Finch has done a heck of a job taking over the last couple of years, has had a lot of adversity there. Big question mark is whether they'll get Alexander and Gray back. Oh. Look good stroking it, too. We got a game, Mr. Jackson. East has 10 team fouls. West has 9, 7.59 to go in the game, and it's a 7-point, 6-point lead for the East. <laughs> Going on. I'll tell you one thing, when you look at Bob Hurley right here. <laughs> 11 state championships he's won at St. Anthony's. He's coach David Rivers. His son right now is a great one. On the other side, Jim Hulsman, who we were looking at, 12 times voted coach of the year, three state championships. He's won 20. He's had over 400 wins in 20 consecutive winning seasons. In rebounds, the East with 63, the West 49. East leads 81-75. East has the ball. Chris Jackson. Rebound, Billy Owen. Inside, Leitner. Owens loses out of bounds. East but, keeps it. But Bob notice morning and Milton Bell, the other player. Keith, notice had a great player wants the ball late in the game. Here's another example. Billy Owens wanted the basketball. It's crunch time. He knows his team needs a basket. They're on the ropes a little bit right now. A little rocky after the big lead. Morning inside is held by Ellis. Elefonso hasn't had a typical Ellis day. Certainly not the kind of play that led East St. Louis Lincoln High School to two consecutive state championships. That's 10 team fouls on the West. Yeah, they're playing with that rule here, the 10th you shoot. We took a look before at John Wooden and Morgan Wooten, the W&W gang that stands for W equals win. Let's take a look at the technique of Alonzo. Look at those two guys. You talk about wins. Do you think they've had a few wins in their career? <laughs> it's John Wooden on the left, Morgan Wooten on the right. Morgan's going to meet the president, Ronald Reagan, next Friday at the Rose Garden. You know what I like about the two men? When you ask them what their profession is, what do they say? Teacher. There you go. And they're also men with a capital M. <laughs> Got an eight-point game right now. Chris Mill. No. Almost an air ball. Well, the defensive player stepped out on Chris, and it really knocked him off balance in shooting the jumper there. He's got good range, though. Mills can shoot the ball from deep. Kemp. He has it blocked. There's Back to Kemp, and he's going to draw a foul on it. Sean Kemp is 6'10", but very, very quick. 6'10", and with his frame, probably we're going to wind up weighing somewhere 225, 30. Play anywhere he wants along the baseline yep. as well. There's some question mark academically, though, Keith, whether he'll be going to Kentucky or to junior college. There really hasn't been a decision from some insiders have reported to me that there's a possibility he may go to junior college. Look at the McDonald's. 
kids get a chance to visit the Ronald McDonald House. Certainly a fantastic cause. Bob Gagan, the executive director, and his people really worked so diligently to make it a first-class week for all these kids. Owens in the corner at seven minutes. Feeds it inside. Morning, morning foul by Ellis. Lafonso's in a no-win situation now. Morning establishing position inside, and as long as, as they bring that ball in at that 45-degree angle, uh, Ellis is going to eat the foul. That is probably the most difficult thing for these kids to learn when they step on a collegiate level. How to play defense away from the ball, whether it be on the wing or whether it be down in the boxes, and how to play post-defense. Morning missed it. Bell rebounds it, however. East keeps the ball, and Jackson pumps. No. Rebound. Finally goes to Bell. He lost it for a moment. Now gets it back. And is hammered. That's got to be a foul, doesn't it? Oh, it is a lot of contact. Again, should have given the ball up just a little bit earlier, Lafonso. He had an open man on the left wing. He had his head down. One of the rules in handling the basketball is so he can have vision of the court. Now watch this right now. Lafonso's got a wingman. It's a two-on-one break. So you're going to see a white shirt popping in. Well, you couldn't see it right there, but he just missed. I'll tell you one thing. Sean Kemp might be the most talented player. You talk about pure talent. Kemp has just got a world of it. Well, Ellis finally scored. He was the last man to score. He'll score a lot when it counts over at the Fighting Irish place. I'll guarantee you that. So. They signed another good shooter by the name of Keith Atkins from out of Kentucky. 83-79, only a four-point lead for the East at 640. And it's almost stolen by Chris Mills. Morning having a hard time. Out of the corner, Leitner. No, no rebound. Kemp. Look at that talent. Rebound, handle the rock. Look at him handle it. Look at this kid. Are you serious? Are you for real? That's a superstar potential. Oh, hold me down, Mr. Chair. <laughs> hold me down. Wow. Woo! Jackson forces a prayer and it's answered. They're high school kids. They're high school kids. <laughs> CJ with a deuce after Kemp. Oh, look at Big Shaw. Partially blocked, taken out, break away. They're home free for morning. Power dunk by Mr. Morning. And Good it's afternoon. a six-point lead. And a timeout. What a play by Kemp. I can't believe it. 6'10", going coast to coast and slam dunking it. And he's... And he's 17 years old. Take a look at his talent. Multi-talented, a PTPer. Oh. Yeah, well, here's Morning at the other end. At 5.49 to go in the ball game. And it's a game now. 87-81 East. Well, Sean Kemp has taken a bit of a rest. He earned it. He rebounded his ball, and now we're watching. Now, remember this. This is a 6'10 player, not a 6'1 guard. Take a look at this. I know I get carried away, but I've watched a lot of talent, and that is a talent with a capital T. Look how fluid and how smooth, silky smooth. Look at the extension, the explosion. Give him a 10 on the scale, a 10. Now if we could just get him some grades, huh? Well, I hope so. I really do. I really hope that the kid realizes there's more than just the jump shot in life, and that academics also are a vital part of making it. Unfortunately, Keith, for some of the kids, those SAT scores, I've always felt that they're definitely culturally biased. I really wish they didn't utilize them for eligibility. I wish they didn't utilize them for anybody exactly. because it just makes you a number. Exactly. I think that, you know, based on what a kid achieves in that classroom, I think the core curriculum is excellent that the NCAA has, but I certainly don't like the SATs used for eligibility. I've said time and time again, use them for placement, but not for eligibility. It's unfair. Inside it goes. Hodge. Hodge loops it outside to Werdan and Werdan. Good touch on the baseline. And yep. suddenly it's an eight-point lead for the East. That was a nice play. A little zigzag maneuver. Excellent pass to the baseline. And nice touch by Werdan. Excellent touch right there in catching that ball and shooting it. They're allowed to go with their best players now. It's up to the coach to play who he wants. Martin got away with a stroll that time. Gets the ball back. This is Chris Mills. 
Probably an ill-advised shot there. Forced and Hodge comes out with it. Well, two bad shots. One by Derrick and another one by Chris. When you don't have that normal team offense, you're going to see a lot of that, especially in a half-court game. Billy Owens handling it now for the East. Four and a half minutes to go and leading by eight. And a whistle on the top. He, he makes that bounce pass as well as any college player I have seen. This is about the fifth time I have seen him make that good direct bounce pass entry to the post. That's a lost art. A lot of kids can't make that pass into the post. You talked about it earlier when they were trying to throw the ball inside. I like the looks of this, this youngster. I think he might turn out to be a heck of a player. Oh, he's going to be a heck of a player at St. John's. He's got good hands, good touch. He's mobile. He's got good touch right there again. He converts both free throws. Jack Curran, what a coach at Archbishop Malloy. I like that look on his face, that set jaw. I will do it. Not I can do it, but I will do it. Here's Day taking it in. Off the iron. And there's that good tough rebound by Leitner. Leitner's a tough kid as well. He's going to be a solid contributor down at Duke. Archbishop Malloy, we talk about Brian Winters, Kevin Joyce, and a host of other great players. A nice dish. Owens passing, and Leitner's foul. Can't get over the unselfishness of Billy Owens. I didn't anticipate expect that when I started to do these all-star games. He is so unselfish. He could rather give the ball up than shoot the jump shot. Derek Coleman ought to get to know him really well on a Syracuse campus. Take him out for dinner every day because he'll give him the ball. All right, Day is going to leave, and so is Mills for the West. That'll bring Thompson back and Poole back. Christian Leitner going to the line now, and here's one more. Here comes Sean Kemp back for the West, replacing Ellis. Seeley is in for the East, along with Owens, Leitner. Leitner, 27 points a game, 17 rebounds a game. What numbers? Morning and Green, the other two people for the East. Academic All-American as well. We talked about it earlier. Oh, he comes up empty on two free throws. The rebound, Kemp. Four minutes to go, 91-81, East. West whittled it down at one point. They had it down to four. And in control, but there we go, here we go, yo! The East has come back. Scott Morning holding inside. There's a look at Alonzo. You know, looking at Derek Warren, he's certainly a point guard more than he's a shooter. And we watch him right now. There's some post play inside. He's bumping, he's bumping on him. Roberts is big and he's also strong. But you know, talking about Derek Warren, when you go to UCLA with Pooh Richardson, he's got to work on a free throw line. And Matkin's an excellent guard combination. Trevor Wilson is ecstatic over Jimmy Herrick's selection. Martin goes there and they get McLean. They'd have a heck of a ball club. Still need a center. Well, to be really great, but there's certainly be an improved basketball team. And I, I think Jimmy Herrick's going to bring a lot of discipline to that program. Needs it badly. Owens will go to the line. I'll tell you, the other schools involved with them, McLean also. you got Bobby Kremen who's worked so hard in recruiting McLean. And Georgia Tech's involved, also Kentucky, and also UNLV. And Pittsburgh's also there as well. Back now to run the point for the West. Rebound, Morning. Need a big rebound, Mr. Morning, right there. Boom. See, there's a weakness, though, of Roberts. You could spot it right there, Dick. He was he's late. He was, for some reason, he was waiting. And he was too late to do anything about it. Got one there. But he, he came right back at Alonzo with a little power move. He's got to work on getting a little quicker, a lot of foot drills. I'm sure DL's going to have him utilize a lot of big man drills to develop his quickness inside. That's Crawford Connor. Physical, tough, hard nose. Nothing spectacular. Get in the trenches and get it done. Palmer foul. See, the problem with Sean Kemp is that he tries to be too spectacular. He's always looking to make the big, big play rather than a routine fundamental play a la Billy Owens. There he is. He's going to break right through the defense. Now he's going to spin. He's going to try to... Look at this. Look at this right here. He wants five points for that shot. 
Oh, Crawford uh, trying to get away with one there. He just sort of flicked him as he went by, tried to pick his pocket. It's amazing when we talk about kids like this kid and Kenny Williams and Morning and Owens and the ability level, and we're looking at 6'8 and bigger, and it's just amazing their agility. Palmer rebounds it for the East at three minutes to go. 95-84. East leads. But Terrell Green, too long. He's had a tough time shooting the ball here Look today. Look at that go again. Get that ball. Look at this. Now, he tries to handle a little too much. Indecisive that time, though, as Morning slams at the other end. He couldn't make up his mind what to do. Is that a thoroughbred? Is Georgetown going to be good? Are they going to be rocking at the Landover Arena down here at the Capitol Center? Mr. Morning says, hello, good afternoon. Oh, kept missing. Always something spectacular. Every time you see him involved. There's a foul. And that's a silly foul. Robert. Hey, one thing, though, and I know John Thompson is a... Is a as well organized as a human being can be when it comes to preparing a basketball game. Disciplinary. Yep. But you can't forget the fact that John Thompson is carrying a heck of a burden. He's the Olympic coach. Now, when are the Olympic Games? They're October, right? They're in October. And so he's, he's gonna, late. He's going to be late coming into the arena. But I know that John's organizational skills and his ability have him basically a team that's going to be experienced. See, that's the great thing for Morning. He steps into a program where they have other good players. It's not like everything is built around Alonzo. Well, you're right. You make a good point. Certainly the pressure of winning the Olympics, it's not going to be as easy as people believe with the improvement no. overseas, Yugoslavia getting better and well, better. Especially when you got professionals playing in Italy and Spain exactly. and Yugoslavia and Brazil and all those places. I mean, those are paid pros making a quarter million dollars. Oh, yes. Good entry. Down into Mr. Roberts. I disagreed with that other analyst's analogy. Oh, look at the kickback that we can beat and win the gold medal with the University of Arizona basketball team. I know they really have an outstanding team, and I know they beat the USSR, but really, when you talk about Yugoslavia and all those big people, I don't believe that you can just take our NCAA champs and win in a gold medal situation. Where is it wrong? Well, the USSR is going to win anything. Exactly. They're not <laughs> as strong as they've been in the That's past. Right. And plus, when they played here, they didn't have Sabonis. Right. On the line, Todd Day. Time remaining, 2.05. 99.86 now as the East lead stretches to 13. Back to 12. The talent has definitely lived up to all of my expectations, Keith and Moore. I mean, we have seen some really gifted athletes really perform well here. You're not going to have the team concept, even though the kids have tried to play it in an unselfish way. The rhythm and timing not playing together very often is very difficult. Chris Mills can't get it to drop. Finally, it's taken out of there by Crawford Palmer. And cleared to Redan ahead to Billy Owens. Blocked from behind, but right into the hands of Bell and Kemp. Blocked it. Jump ball. West ball. Owens trying to give it up again. Caught the ball at the top of the key. Was trying to make that good triangle pass. Take a look at Billy Owens, 34. Look one way. Now he's looking to dump it down. He's trying to dump it down, not shoot the ball. They deflect it from behind. There goes Bell. Makes it up strong, but they get a piece of it. Well, it's a good thing that Derek Martin is loose and limber because he put down hard that time. I really believe the best two senior guards, and I know Chris Wallace, who does a great job with the Blue Ribbon Report, feels this way. The senior class, Jackson and also Martin, I think as a duo, they're the best combination. With Hero Green right behind him, an explosive scorer who plays just a little bit out of control, but certainly one of the top guards in the nation as well. There's a foul on Martin. At 37 to go in the game. I'll tell you one thing. If I were Dean Smith, I'd call Mr. Lebo in the office. I'd say, Jeff, I'm going to tell you what we have to do with your scholarship, son. <laughs> we got to call it in. He said, what do you mean, Mr. Smith? You didn't get me. Your dad is the coach of Carlisle, and you didn't get me, Mr. Owens. You didn't get him to sign and come here to Chapel Hill. I'll tell you one thing. He wanted to go. I guess his brother played a big important part in the role of making that decision to go to Syracuse. 
got to work on a free throw line as well. Odd day as the ball slapped out of bounds by Owens. And the West will keep it at 132 to play in the game. East leading by 10. Martin forces a rainbow. Day puts it up. Goaltending. Count it. Count that basket. Anytime you have a direct lane to the goal within the three-second area, and you're taking it directly to the basket like that, nine out of ten times they'll call that a goaltender. Take a look, right? He's directly in the middle of the... See right there. Does he get it on its... It was close, very close. Day now with 17 points, top scorer in the game. Foul called on Martin, stopping the clock at 122. Remember, you got to get the... Excuse me, Keith, but you got to get that ball on its upward flight, not on its downward... Motion. Martin fouling uh, for Dan. Going to make him uh, do some scoring at the foul line. What about the MVP? Last year, you and I disagreed. We thought it should have went to Brian Shorter. It went to Mark Shaken, Bacon, Macon out in Philadelphia. I'll tell you who I feel today. Again, we have to, I guess, define what an MVP is or an outstanding player. I think the MVP, because it was established early, the lead, was the dominant player, that guy right there, number 34, Mr. Owens, early in the game, controlling tempo, passing, rebounding, and scoring. You're hesitating? You're... No, no, I don't disagree with you. I'm, my right. silence is agreeable. <laughs> he has uh, Owens 10 points and 14 rebounds. But it's, you're right, presence on the floor is a very important factor. Well, especially when you're looking at most valuable player. We're not talking. We got into that discussion last night also with Morgan Wooten. There's a difference between a most outstanding player and a most valuable Oh, player. look oh, out. I don't want to see anybody get hurt here. Well, Roberts came crashing down on Milton Bell, and Bell walks away and will be able to tell his grandchildren about it. There goes Bell. I was ready to yell, ding dong. I want a ding dong. Oh, he bangs him right here. I was ready for that slam dunk to give out an explosion. Roberts Ding is dunk gone. Bell. Six foul. Stanley is going to be an excellent player down at LSU. The SEC, he's got them getting himself a good one, Stanley Roberts. Well, he eased up a little bit. I mean, he could have really hammered but he didn't, obviously didn't want to. He was just trying to stop the shot. Dale Brown signed another good player by the name of Boudreau, talented player who has a brother named Carroll, who's a junior from out of Louisiana. Yep, makes it. Speaking of Milton Bell from out of Richmond, what a job Dick Tarrant did with that University of Richmond. Just a tremendous story. An outstanding coach. He does a great job with his defense and his shot selection. Chris Mills against Milt Bell. Now Martin tries to go back to Mills on the baseline. Werdan picks it off. Bell is fouled by Martin. Bell is an explosive jumper. Tough kid inside as well at 6'6". Here he is going to the foul line again. Just converted to. Alonzo Mornings uh, points 16. Rebounds at 9. You know, it's great being a McDonald's All-American, Keith. That's a tremendous achievement, a work ethic that's been there to get there. But think about this, 1987 NBA draft. Only four players in the first round out of 23 were All-Americans. You had Ken Joe Wolf, you had Kenny Smith, you had Dallas Comagies and Reggie Williams, David Robinson, Armand Gilliam. They didn't play this game. And this year, you look at the lottery, it looks like it'll be Danny Manning, certainly Hersey Hawkins, Rick Smiths from out of Maris. You'll talk about Ronnie Cycli. Many of those kids weren't high school All-Americans either. And uh, the point I'm trying to make is it's going to be up to these kids how hard hard they work, and if they really do the same things that they did to get where they are today, to go to the next level. Mills misses, but defense inside keeps it there, and Anderson picks it up and slams it in. He uses his right hand, his left hand. Good inside player, Eric Anderson. Give up the bounce pass. Yes, there it is. Excellent pass. Well, makes it 103 to 97. 95. Short. Camp is held by Palmer. 
Derek Morton has to work on his perimeter jump shot. He's got to be able to shoot the ball a little bit better from the outside because the defenses will certainly play off him and try to take away his great quickness. With 20 seconds remaining, it's 103-95, and Sean Kemp will go to the line. Little tip for some of you kids out there. You come down two on one and you want to make that good entry, use that bounce pass. That's the best pass to use two on one and a break against the defensive player. He's a good looking guy going to the sideline. with a couple of free throws to make it a six point, but here's a gimme at the other end for Bell. Ding dong, Bell! Toyota Grand Prix from Long Beach coming up right after our basketball game. There's a lob inside the Kemp. He hammers it home. Sean Kemp, what a talent. You don't want to be getting in the way of that one. That's a good way to take a broken hand to the supper table. Your game is over. Final 105-99. The East beats the West. The most valuable players, I heard one of them, Alonzo Mourning. Alonzo Mourning and Billy Owens, co-MVPs, great choice. Two absolutely, two absolute stars who lived up to their early billing. And there's your final score before a crowd of 12,815. The McDonald's All-American High School Game, ABC Sports Exclusive, brought to you by the good time, great taste of McDonald's, and by Embassy Suites Hotels. Coming up next on ABC Sports, top IndyCar drivers running the streets of Long Beach, California, the last tune-up before the Indy 500, the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Promotional fee paid by McDonald's. And this has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. We hope you enjoyed it from Albuquerque.